Hello and welcome back to our channel. My name is Cameron McKenzie and today we're going to be looking at the newly released configurations inside of Fusion 360. This is a great new addition that has been released as part of the September update to Fusion 360 and we're going to go through the process of creating and managing these tools within the product. Now this is available within both components and multi-component assemblies inside of Fusion 360 and we should see the ability to grab our configure window or configure panel rather within the overall toolbar within our design workspace. And simply put, what the configurations will allow us to do is make multiple different configurations or variations of our design using any of the features that already exist inside of our component. So you'll see this component that I've designed has a variation of parameters inside of our change parameters window. Uh, but the main driving ones behind all of this are the width, the height, and the thickness from a parameters perspective. What this means is if I change the width or height, uh, we've got various um, formulas that are going to drive the, the pattern that is created within the holes um, and positioning of a few other features throughout the component. So really I just want to be able to drive the overall dimensions of the component with a few tweaks to the height and the, uh, and the width. So starting the configuration process, um, inside of the configure panel, we've got two buttons available to us. We've got configure and we've got the option to display the configuration table. Now, both of these will take us to the same look. Um, however, the configure button will take us directly into the configuration mode. So as soon as I click on that, it will open up the configuration table as well as op opening and enabling the configuration mode. I can end the configuration mode with the tick box um, and then carry on working in inside of the configuration uh, directly from there. Otherwise I can also just go and open the configuration table and you can see it takes us to exactly the same point in time whereby we can then start adding variations to our configuration. So inside of the configuration table we've got the ability to first of all uh, create configurations as the name would imply. So we've got the ability to start off with our first configuration here. We can right click and rename the configuration. We can also duplicate existing configurations as well. So to begin with, we want to go in and add the elements or aspects that we potentially want to make alterations to per a configuration. And the way we can do this is by in the top right of the uh, the panel over here, we've got the ability to first of all add parameters and then secondly add aspects to that. By selecting add parameters, this is going to open up our parameters window. And you'll see we have a configured column available to us where we can choose which parameters we want to change in here. So if I go and grab thickness, as soon as I click on thickness over here, we will see it added to our table. We can then also go and grab width and height and these are the three parameters I want to make adjustments to. The other option we have within the configurations is the ability to toggle features and to adjust features that are created inside of our components. So you'll notice I am in configura the configuration mode based on selecting add parameters. Um, I could also go and click add aspects and this would keep me inside of the configuration mode. And inside of the configuration mode, you'll notice that certain elements to our design have been highlighted in blue. So anything that is highlighted in blue is available for selection um, and that could include entire solids or sketches or our entire component as well. So if I click on any of these elements within configuration mode, just with a single left click, you'll notice the different options that are available for this particular element or aspect. So we've got the ability to go and grab the physical material or the appearance or visibility of a component inside of our design. If I go and grab appearance, you can see that that then adds the appearance inside of my table. 
and we have themes that we can choose from. We'll get into that in a bit more detail a little later on. And if I hit OK on there now, I can then go and grab any other aspect I might want to go in and adjust. So in this case, I might want to configure whether this hole, which is my handle currently, is active or not in some configuration. So I'll go and select the whole feature from inside of the timeline and I can choose its suppression option. I could also go and choose the depth and the diameter and tip angle if I wanted to. If I go and select through any of the other features, you'll see all the different options that are available to us for each of those. In this pattern, I can choose the quantity in each direction, the distance in each direction, and again, whether I suppress the pattern or not in a particular configuration. My extrusion, I can choose its distance, so the thickness in this case, uh, again, suppression and taper angle. So every different feature will have varying options available to it. Once I've got all of the elements that I might want to change, the aspects and parameters that I will want to change inside of my configuration, I can then go and start making those tweaks. So you can see it has defaulted to the values that will be set um, inside of the particular component already. So I've got my width and I've got my height that are already currently in my model. I've got the ability then to rename this so I might go and actually name this based on the height and width of the component so I'll go in and call this one the thousand by 600 and hit enter to confirm I can then go and duplicate this with a right click duplicate and all of the parameters are going to stay the same for me inside here and I can just go simply in and rename this one and I'll just go and alter potentially the uh, the height of the component for this one so I'll go for a 1200 by 600. You can hit enter to confirm and that'll add that in there. I could select both of these and rearrange them using the sort columns, sort rows option. Otherwise I can go in and create multiple different configurations or add rather multiple configurations to this by changing the number of configurations I wanna add hitting the add button and we can see those are added in here for us. So I might this time around want to go in and create a configuration that is still a thousand high uh, but maybe 500 wide and then the other configuration I might want to add if I rename this one in here is 1200 by 500. Now, just naming that doesn't change anything. We will want to go and change the actual parameters of this as well. So in the uh, width and height, I want to make sure that the height and width match the name of the component or the configuration rather. So I want to go and give this one a value of 1200. This one of the a width of 500 and this one a width of 500 and a height of 1200. And you can see how it adjusts on screen for us. Now, if I go and double click on any one of these or right click and activate, it will go and activate those variations for me. So rather than having to go in and change the parameters every time, I'm now just choosing between four different values. And I might decide that all of the, uh, the shorter um, elements, so any of those with a thousand as the height, they might not need the hole for the handle. So in my hole one option, I've got the ability to then suppress the component or suppress the feature within that particular component. So just by clicking on the suppress option, I can toggle between suppressed and unsuppressed. So all of the thousand mil, I wanna go and suppress the hole in. So any time I choose either of the two thousand, there isn't a hole, the 1200s have that hole might decide that the 1200s need a slightly thicker panel to them so if I look at the side of this component over here I might want to go and bump up the thickness of that to say something like 1200 and see a slight variation in thickness and my hole doesn't go all the way through so you can see that it's a little bit more material left behind the back which I might want to include in the final product so this 1200 once more I'll just change the thickness to 12 mil so we can see the thickness varies between the different configurations. 
And when it comes to the appearances, both the appearances and and materials, physical materials, will have themes rather than just grabbing a set appearance or a set material. And in those themes, much in the same way as the configurations, we can come in and rename those themes, we can duplicate the themes, we can delete the themes from the list. But the, what these themes will do is allow us to, based on every single individual body inside of a design, we can have a theme to the appearance and a theme to the physical material. So we can have some components inside of our model um, have a different material or appearance to the other. Um, and we can choose how those vary based on our configurations as well. In this case, I've only got a single component in here or a single body. Um, so I can tell it to either dra drive the uh, the appearance based on the physical material of the component, or I can override that in here. So I can go for a steel satin um, as my theme one. Again, I can rename that one to steel, and that will then go and grab that over here. I can create or duplicate that if I wanted to. I can add a new theme in here um, and tell the theme two to go for oak. I can rename this one and say this is going to be my wood theme. So again, I could go in and say all of a particular type of component needs to have the wood appearance. Others might want to have a steel. So if I activate that one now, we can see the wood theme and then the steel for the rest of them. I might just say that one of these needs to have steel, the rest will need to have wood. Once we're happy with that, once we're happy with those configurations, um, the final tweaks we could make to this potentially would be the properties. So every single configuration can have a different property and a different part number if we would so desired. So we can go in and add those in there. Uh, but once we're happy with that, I can hit close on here. Um, and rather than having to go in and change the configurations inside of a configuration table every time, you might notice that inside of our browser, we now have the configuration dropdown whereby we can choose between the different configurations we've created. And with this file now saved, I've got a instance of this inside of an assembly. So I can go over to my assembly now and we can see that that file has been updated with the part number, with the corresponding part number. If I go and refresh this, it might take a little while to synchronize, depending on internet speeds. Let's try that one more time. We can then get a live version of that model inside of our assembly. So you can see these are the um, ones I've just designed over here. So not only can I go in here now and choose the configuration that is inside of an assembly, by right clicking on each element and telling it to switch configuration. So now I've got that uh, 1000 by 600. If I wanted a slightly taller one, I could go ahead, click on that one, hit OK. You'll see it gives us a few of the, the, the main parameters in there, but we can go and change the configurations directly from inside of um, the model space itself. But we can also then go and make variations and configurations of assemblies and we can go as high up as we want to with this by um, creating configurations on top of configurations. Um, so inside of my assembly, I can go and look at my configuration table for the file itself. And we can see that in this particular one, I've got my 1200 by 1000, uh, which will need the 1200 by 600 door. And we've got the ability to then flip between which component we're using in each of these. So I don't have that particular one added into my configuration just yet. And so to add this, I can simply go into add aspects, tell it which component I want, and then tell it that I want to adjust the insert for that particular one. So I can see I've got my cabinet door. And I want to insert different variations of each of those from inside here. So at the moment, it's currently looking at the 1600 in the one and the 12,000, 1200, 600 in there. 
So I can go and change the variations that I want in here. So I will drop that to the 1500 on both of these two. The 1600 on here. Might go for the 1200 by 500 on these ones. And then finally the 1200 by 600 on here. That one might be a bit too tall, so let me drop that one back down to that, which looks better on this configuration. And we can just keep changing between those there. 12 by 6. There we go. And what that will then mean is as I activate the different configurations, yes, I mix these values up a little bit too much over here, um, but we've got the ability to then go into our um, back into the component, make the variations we need in those. Um, and then select them based on the configurations we want inside of our model space. Again, if I close this down, we've got the ability to then choose inside of the assembly the varying sizes that we want for this one. So that 800 is probably a bit too shallow. I want it maybe a bit too wide. But we can go in and make adjustments to those. I just don't have the correct sizes. I haven't configured the right sizes inside of this part file um, to make those changes in here. This one works nicely, so I'll keep to this design over here. Um, and again, we can go in and, and decide, well, actually, in this configuration, we might have a variation of this whereby um, certain elements are toggled off. So using that configuration five over here in my add aspects, I could say, you know what, this door over here, I want it suppressed. So it's not going to be visible in this configuration as we can see over here. And we can toggle other components on and off. So you might also want to have different variations in uh, the, the type of component or the actual active component inside of a configuration. So that's a brief overview of the configuration tools that are available to us now within Fusion. Uh, all of these will also be available from a drawing perspective. So if I go back to my model over here, I can go and create a drawing from my design. Choose the configuration that I want to grab a drawing of. I'll just go with the default settings on there. I've got the ability then to place down a view of this. So I might go for a one, two. 10 scale on this component and I can at any point in time right click on the component inside of my view and switch the configuration so if at any point you decide actually you want a different version of that particular model we've got the ability to switch those in here and uh, we could naturally go in and create different drawings for each of the different components as well. From here, we have the, the standard functionality whereby we can go in and grab the various properties, add dimensions, create whole tables, and so on based on the various configurations. So hopefully that's been a detailed enough view of this. If you would like to see this in a bit more detail or would like to have a further discussion on how you can begin to implement this in your workflows within Fusion 360, please do get in contact with us. We'd love to talk you through it and, and be able to assist you with that. Other than that, thank you very much for your time today. Have a great day further. Bye for now.